is my head in the frame now? It's a fun game we like to play. Bell, and today I'm going to show you how to do a Regency style hairstyle for long hair. So first thing I'm going to do is part my hair down the center and give it a good brushing out while I'm at it. Alright, so there it is. It is in the center. An early Regency, it didn't really matter if it was parted in the center or like if you didn't have a part or if it was parted to the side. But if we get into the uh, 18 teens, it was more fashionable to have it to the side. All right, and now basically the hair that like wants to fall in front of my shoulders, I'm gonna let it. So basically the hair that is like here in front of my ear. Fantastic. So my hair is now into three sections. I have two little sections here and a big section in the back. This big section in the back is going to go up. I'm going to make a ponytail like right, like pretty high on my head. Go ahead and make sure it's try to be as flat as possible. And then I'm going to put a hairband in. Alright, feels like I almost have like a 60s do going on. Alright. So with the bony tail, I'm then going to put it into three sections and braid it. Alright, I'm going to put a little hair tie on the end there. And now I'm going to wrap this into a bun, but like a pretty, pretty loose bun. Uh, I'm going to hide my, my little hair tails up in there. So really it's more like a crown that sits on my head rather than a bun. Um, so very, very loose bun, more like a little, little crown of braids. I'm going to anchor that in with some wolfie pins. So the Regency was all about trying to look like neoclassical, very inspired by <clears throat> um, works of art from ancient societies such as Greek and Rome. But as we get into the 18 teens, so like later Regency period, uh, romanticism is taking off in art, literature, architecture, all of the above, and that becomes more and more dominant as you go into the 1820s and 1830s. So here we're starting to see a little bit more, more a little bit more romanticism, and romanticism is also linked to historicism, which means that they are looking back now instead of looking all the way back to ancient societies like ancient Greece and Rome, they're looking more to like medieval and renaissance Europe for inspiration. So if you see a little bit of that in here and that's a, a, a little bit more of what I'm going for because my dress is a little bit more romantic in style than neoclassical. All right, so that's pretty well secured. Um, now I'm going to take my two side pieces here and this is this is where it gets interesting because with the Regency, you also have those like face curls, um, and I don't have any wig pieces to do that. Um, and obviously, if I do like little curls here, it's not little curls; it's long curls, which is great for the 1840s. 
um, not so great for 18 teens, uh, and and I, I always feel like I look like a basset hound uh, when I do anything with this that are long. So, a very cute basset hound, but a basset hound. I look like a moose. Yes, but a very cute moose. Make all the boy moose go. So here, we're going to start, like right where our ear is, we're going to twist it. Okay, and then just bring it up and over the front of the bun. And we're going to have to get like some bobby pins to make sure it like stays. But see, and then we just go up and over across the front. And then bobby pin it into place and so it doesn't do like this uh, you kind of have to bobby pin the back over here so that way you kind of have still a fun little thing going on over here but not to look like a basset hound now I'm going to a ball this evening so I want to make sure my hair is very well pinned into place <laughs> all right don't want that to get tangled. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side, right where our ear is. We're going to start twisting. And then we're going to go up and over. So that one went under. I'm going to see if I can pull this one under that curl as well. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, a couple more bobby pins. Now, I'm going to plug in my iron. And I'll turn it on and let it heat up. I'm about to curl these two sections here. We're going to have several little curls. So that way it still kind of looks like we have curls around our face, even though we have very long hair where that is not possible. Uh, we are faking it. Fake it till you make it. All right, so my curly iron has heated up, so I'm going to curl these little sections here. pretty much it. I am going to add a tiara and some feathers to my hair, uh, but otherwise if you want to do it simply, uh, if you're not going to a ball, uh, then you're done here, but I'm going to add a tiara and some feathers. So I have an empress tiara that looks very much like the empress Josephine's tiaras. I'm going to like put this behind each of my little swoopy swoops. 
and that'll help hold it in place as well. Alright, still doesn't feel like super secure on my head, so I'm going to go ahead and bobby pin it. Alright, and then a couple of feathers, which remind me of when Daphne got presented to the Queen in Bridgerton and are also a historically accurate feature. We're going to put them on this side since our hair was a little bit higher on that side. I'm sticking them like down inside my bun, if you can see that, um, to help hold them and then just stick it in a little bobby pin. And there we go. And I'm ready for the ball. Well, I have to put on my dress first, but then I'm ready for the ball. <laughs>